Hi everyone, welcome to Services Marketing MKT 561. I'm Steve D'Alessandro. I'm the your lecturer, or, or as we call it in CSU speak, your subject convenient. And today I'll be talking about an overview of services marketing. What are services, how are they different? How do we market services differently to other um, products, say for example, and so on. And uh, something about this service economy now, which is really the most important part of the Australian economy now. Okay, so let's start off with what we mean by a service. And I'll just move myself just down here. Okay, a service is really an act or a performance or an experience that provides some sort of value. So straight away, a services uh, are something that you really can't touch. Uh, so customer services um, are also often confused with services and they're normally part of a product offering. The example here from the Industry Insight on page 13 of your textbook talks about a new service which is uh, the Optus mobile phone service of being able to record um, from your television. We can also see that the service here might be the football match that's being displayed here as well. So any idea of an app performance or experience is usually a service okay so it's quite different to a product as we'll see later for a lot of services for them to have value it requires the consumer or the other party to interact with the provider to co-create the value and that's another uh, difference that we find in services as opposed to products as I said, uh, as I've also added here, services are more like processes or events and are therefore intangible. So while we've got the tangible device that this gentleman's holding, the intangible aspect of course is the event that that person is watching, the entertainment, a film, a play, um, this lecture in a way is also a service I'm providing to you. So in terms of understanding services, there are, I guess there are two uh, approaches we can take. The first is what we call traditional view of services. And really, uh, just like a product, like uh, uh, buying a, a, um, a car or, or buying a house or you know, buying a refrigerator, it, we get the value from uh, when the product or service is consumed. And that's really how, for a long time, it, uh, until about probably the last five or ten years, services have been viewed. A more alternative view, and it's one that's becoming, which we'll talk about later in the course, service dominant logic, is that value is co-created by the consumer. So the value of this lecture is being co-created, if you like, by additional readings you're doing in the text, hopefully, or by uh, applying this to your work environment in, in the assessments we're talking about. Uh, it also might be uh, the nature of your interaction online and so on. So education is a classic example where the value is co-created. It's not just me um, talking to nobody here, it's how you're using this information and that's really I suppose the co-creation of this service event you're experiencing now. Now uh, I'll just move myself over the logo, you can see that. So some of the aspects of services as I've already talked about are intangibility and as you can see in figure 1.2 of your text, if we categorize services and um, products on a continuum here, we can find that certain types of products, of course, are more tangible dominant, but of course there may be customer service. Then we start to move round about here into areas where services are quite important. And the intangibility, as you can see, gets higher when we move down to things like consultancy, teaching, uh, medical services might be another example. Of course you need tangible things to provide these services. My computer, uh, the room I'm sitting in today and so on. Uh, the other issue of uh, services which is important to remember is what we call inseparability. And basically what this means is that for this service, or a lot of services, the consumer may need to be present to co-produce the value in that service. So the service in education or consultancy requires the client to be present. You need to see your doctor in order to get a medical service. So there's some sort of inseparability between the provider and uh, if you like the client or the consumer, which you don't normally see in, in uh, transactional product type marketing. 
because it's interactions between people, even if we're using technology, there's variability. So it's difficult to maintain a uniform and consistent standard of service quality. If I was to repeat this lecture, you would get a different experience. It might be better, it might be worse, but it's really, really hard to keep it exactly the same. And so uh, standard of service quality and variability is a, is a challenge in services delivering. Uh, services can't be stored. So your experience of this service lasts for 13 weeks. After that, it's finished. So services cannot be stored. So why I can store this lecture, and you could look at it, the actual service of doing marketing 561 is perishable. It only occurs for a certain amount of time. And that's, again, another issue with services because we can't store them in an inventory. Um, we have to manage capacity and demand and so on. And, and things like queues also come into it. So this is quite, it's quite different to um, the challenges you would see in product marketing. Okay, so what are some of the types of services and service encounters? Well, there are four possible types of service encounters. You can have simple um, continuous transactions, buying a ticket. You can have a simple episode, so only going once. You can have complex continuous um, uh, services like medical services or a complex episode like when you end up in, in emergency. And so services of course can vary according to their complexity and how often you interact with them. And this is just showing you uh, from McCall Kennedy's work from a few years ago how we might uh, classify some of the uh, service encounters. So we have a special uh, topic in this dealing with the nature of service encounters and how complex they are in this course. Okay, so what about um, service markets in the Australian economy? Well, surprisingly, we are a service economy. About 70% of our national GDP is our services. And about four out of five, so that's 80%, my maths is okay, uh, are, um, are employed in the, in, the, in the workforce. The value in services to our external trade is roughly 124.5 five billion dollars and some of the biggest areas of course are educational services banking financial services consultancy services and professional services more than 8.6 million uh, Australians are currently employed in service industry jobs so it's a really important part of the modern economy here uh, the next two slides really explain why services have become so popular and you can see as we have an aging population, there are more caring services, health services, two income families, uh, less time. So roughly around about 63% of families, I think, have both people working, people marrying later. Smaller family units means there's less time, but more money to spend. So you get the growth of services like uh, gardening, childcare, um, house cleaning and so on, right? So all these services have been growing as well. Changes in technology. Um, so we're moving into uh, the broadband area here and uh, this allows services to provide greater self-service technology, uh, other new direct channels like the smartphone, uh, which have really only been around for five years, also provides another avenue and another set of, of I guess, suppose, opportunities for both business and our government to interact with people through services. And you can see this reflected where the employment growth is in Australia. So this comes from a publication called Australian Jobs, which is the most recent one that I've got here from 2015. And you can see that the fastest growing areas are health and social assistance. This is one year's figures, up by 256,000 people. Professional, scientific and technical, so I sort of work in that area, 173,000, and um, also um, this involves uh, consultancy service and so on, and the outsourcing of industry services, and then education and training, sorry, that's where I work as well. Um, there are about 80,000 80, odd jobs in that area as well. So you can see that the service economy is growing, it's of vital importance to you if you're working in it, and it's quite likely you're going to be managing or marketing in this area if you're living and working in Australia. It's also true if, we, if uh, you are viewing this lecture in the United States or Canada or the UK and even to a certain extent China now are all moving towards a service economy. 
So what are the challenges of marketing a service? And there are a number. Well, the marketing mix for services looks a little bit different for a start from what we might be familiar with products. So we've got our four P's, but we've also got things like the processes we involve, which we, we talk about that are involved in delivering this service. So processes can include things like uh, technical support, uh, it could include things like credit management, it could include things like um, dealing with um, complaints, uh, service recovery. Then we've got the physical features. And because services are intangible, people often use what they can see to evaluate a service. So the way a doctor's surgery looks, or the way a travel agent looks, and these have been published studies, says a lot about the service quality of that aspect. So many universities now are revamping their campuses and spending a lot of money on these areas. Why? Well, because when people visit the campus, one of the few tangible clues they have are the buildings and the grounds of the university, and that's how they assess service quality. And of course, this is complicated by the nature of services as we've discussed earlier, right? So that's, you know, the intangibility, perishability, and so on. Now we can separate services into two types. There's the core service, so we can think of education, transport, accommodation, these are all core services, they meet a basic need, and communicating a value proposition. But people also uh, consume at that time other periphery services. Um, so for example, you could be visiting a hospital and a periphery service you might go to is the coffee shop or the gift shop there. Uh, you might be flying. Uh, on a business trip and the other services might be the retailing that you have, uh, the food that you have, the service you receive on the airline, right? Or you may just want to unpackage these peripheral services and, and focus on a core service like a, a Jetstar or a Tiger Airways and so on, or Ryanair if you're looking at this from another country. So we can market both these things. And what we're finding now is that often peripheral services do really do guide the overall assessment of service quality. Here are some uh, examples of what I've talked about in Table 1.2 of your text. And again, I think I've got this up in the modules. So you've got uh, air transport for, for um, airlines, but ground services, the bookings, the baggage handling, the beverage, in-flight service and entertainment, uh, are important peripherals. You can see hospitals, the core service there, and then we've got radiology, pathology, and so on. Um, Five-star hotels, the facilities, the room service. If you're watching a sporting, going to a sporting event, it might be the team, the venue, uh, the nature of the crowd. So other people also um, who are present can impact the service encounter. So this is a, a challenge if you're running a sporting event. How do you make an exciting event but how to also do you control antisocial behaviour in crowds and so on. Um, some other differences that services, as you realise now, can't be stored. I can't be put in a cupboard and locked up and then brought out. So the service is here. Uh, it's consumed at a particular time. I go on leave, I go and teach a different subject, etc. So that's an issue. Intangible elements create the service value proposition. So the most important aspects are things we can't really, um, what's the word, see, but we can experience, I suppose. Touch, taste. Services are more difficult to evaluate. So what this means when we look at the next lecture is that in terms of search dimensions, you're going to rely on recommendations of other people. So if you're going to get your hair cut, your car fixed, you're going uh, to a hotel, uh, you look at reviews online, you'll ask people for recommendations. We call this an experience dimension. Some services are very, very hard, like a haircut, medical services, financial advice, maybe even education, until you've actually experienced them, you really can't evaluate them. So we call this an experience or a credence dimension in that the uh, service can't really be trialled until it's consumed. And that makes Switching service is quite difficult, an area I've worked in, um, but it also makes providing services, there's a degree of risk, so people will look for signs that the service provider is trustworthy and can deliver things like brand names, uh, reputation is important, trust and recommendations that I've talked about. Some other differences between um, uh, 
services and goods. Customers usually co-produce the service product or service. Maintaining the service because of the inseparability and the variability is an issue. Okay, so if this course or this subject was taught by somebody else, you might get it. Uh, you would find that the experience would be different, and therefore the service quality might be a bit different. It might be better. It might be worse. And so this is a huge problem for a service provider uh, like Charles Sturr, which is one of the largest online providers in the country. How do you maintain good service quality? The answer is training, recruitment. So a lot of HR kind of issues come into service as well. Uh, the time factor influences people's perception of value. Uh, so sometimes people uh, like to do, for example, an online course because they can access the material at a different time. Um, sometimes that's not possible. We have to queue for a service, for example, uh, boarding a plane or going to a popular nightclub, whatever that is, I don't remember that anymore. And um, so the time factor also influences when we can get a service. I'd like to go on a holiday, but I don't want too many people there, don't want it too many crowded. I can only go on a holiday at this period now. And distributing a service can use non-physical channels, such as online, internet, for example, but also self-service uh, checkouts that you see in service markets as well. Um, th these can be extended to different areas through your mobile phone and so on. So services are quite different to products, which in the end rely on some sort of physical delivery. A service doesn't necessarily need to be physically delivered to you. Table 1.3 of your text, um, list some of the other uh, the challenges or marketing implications of some of the things I can talk about. Uh, so for example just taking the third one down, services can be difficult to visualize and understand. They be un uncertain and perceive a greater risk in purchasing the service. Financial planning, what, what's good financial planning? You don't know till you get it. Uh, the task there explain the benefits of the service and offer guarantees. Being involved with customer co-productions, customers interact with processes, user-friendly processes, physical providing, customer support services are important, and so on. And you can see some of the other um, challenges that are, are provided here. We can also categorize service um, encounters a number of ways. Uh, two of them are listed here. Some, for example, visiting a doctor, um, financial planning, you'd really want to go and see someone face to face. Uh, another example of that might be high-end consultancy projects, engineering, architectural services and so on, require the consumer to be present. Sometimes services can be performed on, like repair services, um, uh, or cleaning services can be performed on your possessions. Okay. So you don't necessarily need to be there, but the service is occurring not with you, but with something you own, and the whole range of, of, of uh, services that occur there. We can also have services, and I'll just move myself up here out of the way, uh, to um, services involving the customer's mind. So what's occurring? So education is an example of that. But you don't have to be physically present. You're not physically present here at the moment, obviously, for this service. And you can have intangible assets. And this can be uh, the storage of information uh, about you, database information, um, services provided by government, um, financial services which are on your assets and things you own, but which are nevertheless intangible, all the way to things now like Bitcoins, which are really, if you like, a high-end service. Cloud computing, if you like, is really now moving more towards this service of intangible assets. And this, of course, is summarised here on uh, nicely in this continuum about what kinds of services fit here. And if we look down here involving customer minds, you see broadcasting, education, mobile phone services, on intangible assets, accounting services, investment advice, on your possessions, plumbing, I forgot that one, it's a really important one, freight transport, car repairs, and where you need to be present, hairdressing, passer, passenger transport, and so on. So that's it for now. I hope you found this interesting and welcome to the subject. I'm really looking forward to teaching you. Well, I actually am, aren't I?